Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. You know, over the uh, last bunch of years, a lot of us have an aversion to the word fat. We think it's going to make us fat. We stay away from fat, fat free, low fat. You see that everywhere. Usually that's the package you pick because you think it's probably healthier because it's low in fat. Not necessarily. We're going to talk about how fats are essential in your diet, can even help you lose weight. And this is all on her radar because she is a master herbalist. She's an acupuncturist, massage therapist, and so much more. And she's back with us. I'm going to chew the fat with Rebecca Wendler Burke <laughs> here on the program. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you, Steve. How are you? Really well, really well. And I'm the fat things on my radar because I always wonder, I take, I take fish oil have been doing it for quite some time now. There's fat in that. Um, I think it's a good thing, but I'm not even sure where to start here when we get to the word fat. Yeah, I mean, it's such a complicated topic. And even if you were to look up like healthy fats on Google, right? Like if you plunked in like rapeseed oil as it is canola oil, mm. um, there is you know a, a, a portion of the web that says that it's healthy. Um, and And so... Um, I think that it's important to distinguish between refined fats and unrefined fats and perhaps consider their smoke point and things like that when you decide to cook with them, um, what you know, healthy fats can do for your metabolism, for proper hormone function, for your gallbladder, for your mm -hmm. liver, for your joints. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and how um, perhaps a deficiency of certain enzymes might make fats difficult for people to process. Um, so th those are all, you know, big considerations in a, a dietary approach to um, thinking smarter about fats. So as we're talking about this, I'm thinking, how do you know if you're getting what you should need? For example, a lot of nutrients, minerals, vitamins, you take a blood test and they can tell you, I found out last, uh, Last summer, right around this time that I was very deficient in vitamin D. I'm like, what? Even the doctor's like, I've never seen it that low. And I just took, you know, bolt up on uh, vitamin D once a week, just took like uh, 50 units and 50,000 units out of it. <laughs> and that, that was yeah. it. How do you uh, get a baseline for the amount of fat that's in your diet and the good fat? That is a really good question. Um, I will say that you know, as we know, the majority of humans are deficient in vitamin D. And it has, it is known that a, a, an extreme vitamin D deficiency will contribute to an autoimmune dysregulation and um, inflammation and things like that. So the, the FDA recommendation for vitamin D dosage is 400 IUs per day. But as a practitioner, sometimes you have to beef up to like 20,000 IUs a day. And um, I know that you know, individuals like Dr. Berg on YouTube will, you know, say to go even higher, like 50,000. Um, per day? Is, yeah. 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 Were, yeah. That was my, <laughs> that was my prescription per week. <laughs> One time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, um, you know, it, it does become complicated and blood tests will kind of help to steer one in the right direction, but really as a kind of general rule of thumb, if you make sure that you're eating a rainbow of foods, you're, likely going to get most of the nutrients that you need. Now, that being said, our the quality of our soil is severely compromised because of pesticides and um, soil depletion and things like that. So um, it is very complicated and difficult to get the nutrients from food that we have historically been able to rely on. Mm. Um, so yeah, so different, different supplements um, will help that. Um, but, you know, like, let's take vitamin B, for example, um, this is, you know, not necessarily a fat, but it is associated with blood deficiency, um, and energy deficiency and things like that. And <clears throat> on the market, there are cyanocobalamins, um, and folic acid. Um, but what people, what we're finding is that there's a, a difficulty in methylating. Um, so it means that you're not absorbing foods properly or your nutrients from foods. Um, and so, um, what you really need is a methylcobalamin and a, a folate, uh, B12 folate. Um, and so those are easier to absorb and will help with, you know, all kinds of metabolism 
issues. Um, so mm. yeah, really, really complicated topic, right? I <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate the, the insight on the vitamin D because this morning I took like 25,000. I, you know, the pres prescription was long gone, but you know, I have the over the counter and it's 5,000 each. So I figured, all right, once a week, I'm just going to, what's, I didn't think it's that bad, but now that you're telling me uh, those numbers, like I was wondering, like, am I taking too much? But probably not based on the numbers yeah. that you're giving there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, and, yeah. And so it's also a good rule of thumb too. Like if you are, if you're dosing high with vitamin D, it is, it's beneficial to take a break, you know, to like go for, you know, a month or two and then just come off of everything for, you know, three to five days just to let your body um, kind of find its baseline. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, that being said, that's what I did. Um, yeah, this is this is a uh, mysterious topic in some ways. What about fats in eating almonds and cashews and nuts? I hear that that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I like to tell my clients and and people kind of in a, in a general way about fat that um, every naturally occurring fat has at least an SPF of four. So like coconut oil, when you buy an SPF, right, that's just, you know, the oil, it is usually an SPF four. Um, and it's my understanding that the smaller the seed, the higher the SPF will go. So you can actually get an internal SPF by taking certain nuts and seeds that have fats in them. Almond oh. is relatively low. Yeah. Avocado oil is around a nine. Um, raspberry seed is about 28 SPF. Um, and you can use that oil both topically and internally to create an SPF protection. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. And then um, carrot seed oil. So this is actually like my little, it's my little carrot seed, pumpkin seed, um, SPF oil. Um, if you use this topically, you can create around a 50 SPF. Um, which is pretty mind boggling if you consider the amount of chemicals inherent to a lot of sunscreens and things like that and wow. how it may be affecting your metabolism, you know, your gallbladder, like high estrogen, like environmental estrogens, how that might be affecting your hormones and weight gain and things like that. So um, I think that it's a really interesting life hack to think about consumption of fats and fatty acids as a way to mitigate harmful sun radiation and things like that. So as, as wow. so what, what I do for my son, you know, and, and as a mom, <laughs> we like to spend time at the, you know, at the water park. And so we're, we're go probably going to the fair today and we're, you know, <laughs> don't want to have to like spray sunscreen all over us. So for a couple of days leading up to an event like the fair or going to the water park, I, I will take, I will buy raspberry seed nutri powder, put it in the pancakes and, then I know that we have at least a, an SPF of 28, like internal protection, which is just absolutely, it's a, it's a game changer. I think it's just, it, I just think it's so cool. Gosh, <laughs> why is anybody talking about this? And as somebody who has suffered from minor skin cancer for literally, literally decades, mm -hmm. uh, never heard about this. And I hate slobbing on sunscreen and, and it's so expensive. So yeah, you, know, you gravitate to the cheaper one. Uh, not to say that the, the more expensive ones are any better, same kind of chemicals and garbage in there, but you don't even know what you're putting on your body. And yeah, for anybody who yeah. doesn't realize it, what goes on your body goes in your body. Uh, the the mind blow for, for me on this was you could take garlic and put it between your toes and in two minutes you'll taste it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so what does yeah. that tell you? Good, good. Yeah, totally. That we absorb yeah, we don't necessarily have to um, absorb nutrients via our food, right? We can, we do absorb things via our skin. Um, like, it's so interesting. I cannot go to get a manicure or a pedicure because of the amount of chemicals in those environments. I come out with a stiff neck or I'm rheumatic. Like there are just so many chemicals in an environment like that. And um, the prevalence of like of cancers for individuals that work in salons like that is pretty high. 
Um, wow. But again, back to your point, like we went to Hawaii a couple of years ago and didn't realize that they have very strict guidelines about what kinds of um, sunscreen you can use there because it depletes the coral life. It is an environmental hazard. You have to, you, you just can't use some of them. And so I was very grateful that we were able to just sort of think about, oh, well, you know, did we have raspberry seed nutri powder, like for the few days leading up to the trip, you know, and, and ongoing while we were on the trip. So so final thought on on this, you take raspberry powder and all of that, everything that we're talking about, and you don't get any sunburn, you don't see any effects, It's it, you, it, you repel the sun from your skin, essentially? Yeah, it creates a, a really nice barrier, cellular barrier. I'm not going to say that you can like stay outside, you know, for eight hours in direct sunlight without any kind of like, you know, sunburn, but, but, you know, it, it greatly improves your, your chances of protection. Um, and, you know, and the, so like carrot seed being um, only, I, I will say that you can really only consume carrot seed externally. There are some contraindications for taking it internally. And um, I won't get into that, but um, it's an interesting substance. We'll say that. Um, wow. Yeah. But um, using carrot seed, you know, topically, in addition to the internal raspberry seed nutri powder internally, um, you will create a really good protection for the sun. And we just want to say that uh, any advice here, any information, it's not <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it's not a substitute for your medical professional and your doctor. If you have a question, ask them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's go over to omega, omega fatty acids and things like that. Yeah, they're highly anti-inflammatory. Um, they will counteract um, certain inflammations. Um, and as a kind of opposing force, um, you know, a, a, a large quantity of canola oil is used in our, in our food system, uh, soy oil and things like that. And so those um, perhaps unrefined are more healthful than refined, but um, the refined actually creates a higher smoke point and a longer shelf life and things like that. So good omega fatty acids are, are very important for joint health, for hmm. um, metabolism, for gallbladder health, um, for liver health, um, you know, skin health and all those kinds of like anti-aging benefits and things like that. So, but mostly what we're talking about here is how to mitigate inflammation. Um, and so a lot of the chemicals and things like that, that we have in our environment are highly estrogenic. And so coming up with something that will help regulate hormones and help to detoxify hormones um, is a good consideration. And on that note, actually, I want to draw your attention and everyone's attention to the benefits of rosemary. Um, it as an herb, um, it has the ability to help the liver detoxify estrogen. Um, and it also helps your body regulate hormones better. So if you are going to be using, you know, a fat that like canola oil, like perhaps throwing a sprig of rosemary in there is going to help. Um, it's a interesting hack for grilling. So if you clean your barbecue with a sprig of rosemary, the oils inherent to rosemary will help mitigate the carcinogens when grilling. Um, so rosemary is a really interesting adaptogen for hormones. Wow. And wow. <laughs> you don't, you don't go online and see this stuff. <laughs> you don't hear about this kind of thing. Um, avocados. Tell me. Yeah. High in fiber. Uh, really great for the gallbladder, for the liver. Um, the oil is, is, you know, a good one. It has a higher smoke point than um, olive oil. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a healthy fatty acid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you I hear smooth it, like, it all over your face. <laughs> well, I never even think about that. I'm, I'm just, you know, thinking about guacamole and avocado spread and things like that, where, you know, I hear kind of mixed, mixed reviews on it. Some say, oh, it's a, the healthiest fat you can consume. I don't know if that's true. Um, or it's just, it's just really good for you. Yeah. It's a monounsaturated fatty acid. Um, so are olives, um, so are almonds. Um, and so those are the more healthful fats. Um, we, we want to avoid trans fatty acids. Those are the more unhealthful fats. Um, and so if, you know, consuming monounsaturated fatty acids will help to 
mitigate the negative effects of a trans fatty acid. How do you know how much you can, should consume? For example, talk about almonds. I got a bag over there. I'm going to hit those in a little while. I usually, that's my, that's my mid morning snack because I eat, you know, my lean breakfast, you know, not a lot um, to get me over to lunch, which is probably like one something. Um, how much should you consume? Same thing with, um, with, a, with, with fish oil. I always, yeah. I wonder if, you know, there's conflicting um, thoughts about that as well. Yeah, there is conflicting thoughts about fish oil. I agree. Um, that's a good question. I, I say that in most cases, a handful of anything is probably your best bet for okay. a dosage for a, a, an amount. Um, and you always want to make sure that these things are, are organic, right? That's like the most important thing. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It costs more, but you would say it's completely worth it. It is completely worth it. Yep. Because what you're, what you're choosing is something that is better for your system. And you're also making that accountability and that choice of choosing the things that are naturally grown, that are not processed chemically, that are not contributing to these 10 corporations that control the majority of our food system. Right. Hmm. Even vegetables, like yesterday, I picked up a bag of small peppers and I like to cut them up and throw them into my salad, which is lunch today. And I looked at the non-organic and it just didn't, it looked a little mushy. I'm like, eh. And then I looked at the organic. I'm like, this feels better. It's like a dollar more. I'm like, yeah, I'm worth it. <laughs> so I bought it. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we are all worth it. The planet is worth it. It is a it is a good endeavor. <laughs> it's a you know, it's a life-changing world-changing endeavor to make these more conscientious decisions about what you're consuming. Would you ever eat non-organic fruit or vegetables or it depends on each individual fruit or vegetable? Yeah, I mean, there's that uh notion of the 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 the, the dirty dozen, right, where strawberries are top of the list for um you want to avoid non-organic strawberries. They can be very pesticide laden. Um, but yeah, look those, look those things up though. You know, there's good information about those. I understand that you don't have to be too concerned about non-organic bananas. Um, there's something to be said about perhaps the peel in that. Mm. Um, but again, I, you know, <laughs> don't don't necessarily have all of the information in front of me but um there is some good information about the dirty dozen see this is what i struggle with because and i've, I've heard that that bananas have a thick peel so you don't have to worry so much about the pesticides going in but then i think about all right they're watering it wherever they're, they're being grown so isn't it getting in somehow yeah well, and think about perhaps the people that are employed to pick those bananas, like what is the prevalence of their cancer? You know, if, you know, like it's not just about you or me, it's about the, the entire food production, the system, like how, how do we protect those individuals who maybe, you know, need the money and can't protect sure. themselves. So on the, uh, on the fish oil side, what, what is the dosage? That's a good question. Um, that I would say probably stick to, you know, one capsule and follow the, follow the brand's guidelines. Um, I know that there are, there's some information on the internet that says a fish oil is not healthy for you. Um, but I, you know, I like, I like krill oil is another good one. Okay. Um, and for people who are um, vegan or vegetarian that don't want to use an animal product like that, I know that flax seed oil is, is excellent. Mm. Also a good consideration for creating an internal SPF. But again, you want to make sure that it is organic. It's my understanding flaxseed oil is great for you. It's a great fat and it actually contains a decent amount of protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Flax is a great food. Um, so is chia seed. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll say uh, an interesting thing about chia seed. It does provide an internal SPF. I don't know what its exact provision is on that, but, um, internally it will help repel ticks and fleas and mosquitoes, which is absolutely mind bogglingly cool. <laughs> is this chia or, or flax, uh, flax? Chia. chia. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I, every once in a while, 
when I remember or I see it in a grocery store, I'll buy a, a little bag and then I'll throw it in a salad just for some crunch. Mm -hmm. um, and That's I like great. the flavor of it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't, didn't even realize. You know, many of us walk around outside in the summertime and we might not get bitten by anything, but then somebody next to us, well, I don't know what it is. They, you know, it must be my blood. They come to me all the time. I don't know what. Maybe it's what that person's eating. Yeah, it is. It, it does come down to blood. It comes down to um, acidity versus alkaline. Um, and so that's a very interesting topic um, where people who are highly inflammatory or have a lot of um, rheumatic issues, they probably have quite acidic blood. Um, and, you know, you can drink alkaline water and things like that uh, in a range of like 9.5 S or 9.5 pH um, that will help to reduce the acidity in one's blood. Um, so the, mm. you know, those are kind of interesting things. I know that pe some people add baking soda to their water. Um, you have to make sure that the baking soda that you're consuming is good quality. Um, but then you kind of deal with a, a, a salt component that might affect blood pressure and things like that. Um, I invested in a, a water machine a couple of years ago that um, is the Kangen um, water machine. I know that Steve Tyler has this thing. It's like the, the Rolls Royce of water filters, <laughs> but it does a whole spectrum of pH. <clears throat> so it does ultra alkaline. So that's like an 11.0 pH. Um, and you can use that in your washing machine. Your, for your clothes, you don't have to use detergent because it's so alkaline that it just helps to emulsify fats and things like that. Um, and then on the other spectrum, there's a 2.5. So that's hypochlorous water. And that has, there's been research done in Japan where they use that water to clean surgical equipment in hospitals to help wow. reduce the prevalence of staph infection and MRSA and things like that. So can I take you grocery shopping? Yeah. <laughs> you must be so fun. Like, I, don't touch Steve, put that down. Uh, yeah. yeah, get that, get that. <laughs> yeah, there's so, so many questions. Uh, I'd like to even, maybe one day, I don't know why it jumped in my head, but uh, we're out of time for today, but artificial sweeteners. There is another one where you wonder, is, you, know, you hear this, you hear that. Uh, Rebecca, how do we find you? How do, how do we connect with you? This is just a part of what you do, of course. In Minnesota, you're an acupuncturist. You can't do that virtually, but the the herbalist side of you, you can, and you can mm -hmm. consult with people and coach them and guide them. How do we find you? Yeah, my website is rwbacupuncture.com. Um, I have a, an Instagram handle called the Sharp Acupuncturist. Um, so you can look me up there and you can also YouTube me, either Rebecca Wendlerberg or the Sharp Acupuncturist. I love your transparency. We talked about this the first time we got together in that the handle on, on IG for what you do, you use the word sharp as an acupuncturist. Yeah. You use needles. Yeah. They're very fine. <laughs> Get over it. It's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I also like to say, you know, like it's a funny kind of tagline, like at the end of like a, you know, an ask or like a, a request or something like that would be like, I don't mean to harp, but acupuncturists are really sharp. <laughs> yeah, well, you are. I was just, you know, I was going to say that and you said the word harp and that's my last name. So I'll go with that. Oh. <laughs> uh, Harper, but uh, one always wonderful talking with you. Learned a lot, even, even in just a few minutes today about uh, good fats and bad fats and looking forward next time we get together. Thank you, Steve. Have a Thank great you. day. You too. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home. 
that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.